and that sort of just morphed into selling my art. So it's it's really just um, how I sell my art, okay. like kind of the name I use. And I live in a house full of boys. That that does help. <laughs> like boys is in your children. As in, I have two boys. Uh, I have a twelve year old and a fifteen year old. I have a boy. Yes, and I have a male pit bull, and I have a <laughs> oh, husband. So you're and totally I'm outnumbered. Surrounded by maleness. Yes. That's like my mom. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. So how does that affect you by being around all men? Does that like affect your artwork? Does that affect your normal day to day? Like, I don't know. Just yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I grew up with a sister, okay. and uh, really. Uh, have been a girly girl. I mean, I really uh, was never into sports. I was a dancer, actor, kind of into the art. So, uh, and I, I produced with my husband these extremely athletic boys. <laughs> so I have been forced to learn about sports. That's and cool. Yeah, it's I, actually been. It's one of those growing been, things for us. It's a growing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. No, I have a sixteen-year-old boy, and then I have a. Um, a 10 year old and a five year old, both girls. And you know, it's, I, I always thought, like, hey, I want a boy so we can do this and that. And then, like, as soon as you have your kids, like, no, throw that out the window. Go, these are, I, I want to, like, spend time with my girls. And I don't know. I yeah. feel like it's just a whole new experience that it's so much better for us. It is. It's yeah. totally a growing experience. For yeah. Me. Cool. Okay. So, what kind of artwork do you do? When someone says, oh, what kind of artwork do you do? What do you say? I'm an abstract painter. Okay. So, um, I, I basically I paint with acrylic paints on canvas and most of my stuff is ocean inspired okay yeah. so but when you say when like you get inspired for something I like I say how does your process go do you like inspired or is it just like you know what I'm going to start painting now and see what abstraction happens how does that work it, uh, usually it starts with color okay I, I think in color I'm a colorist everything has to do with That's color cool. so I really start out um, I actually just, I, I, when I started painting, it was all about just color, pure abstractions, just mixing colors and finding the right combination of colors. And then a couple of years ago, it's almost been almost three years ago, um, I lost my father and I sort of held up in my office and in my studio and I painted and I painted and I started making these seascapes, I called them. They were really ocean inspired. And that's just kind of what came out. And so my abstracts kind of morphed into these ocean inspired uh, landscape ish type is, pieces. Is it therapeutic to get in that zone? Completely. Uh, yeah. Completely. It, it is it total nice. therapy. That's what I say. Like when I have like musicians or artists come into town, it's like, or come on the show, it's say if you are not even su successful you, you you didn't sell one thing nobody listened to your album or whatever the case is you have this artwork that you have that nobody can take right. that away from you this is like you always I know you'll Jake will always have your guitar mm -hmm. and your voice and right. you can be a completely alone and you can go into this like complete other world yeah. and you can get your paint brushes and still do the same thing oh yeah yeah absolutely I want to have that talent. I am all my my stuff has to involve people. <laughs> I, need, I need to work on that one. Um, okay, Jake. So you're a musician. Yes. So um, I, I feel that you are more than you know. Your um, so you know, watch me breathe. That's your band. But right. you also are kind of behind the scenes with a lot of other musicians, local musicians in town. Can you, can you talk about yeah, that a little bit? Yeah. Well, I've been uh, I've been producing for years now. Um, and I love it. It's a, and it, it is exactly that thing where it's kind of this behind the scenes, yeah. um, you know, almost like toiling in the shadows kind of thing. And then, and then trying to, uh, offer it up, you know, for somebody else's project. And, and for me, it's a, it's been a really, um, uh, productive and a healthy, like, growing experience and a healthy challenge because I have to think of how to use my creative output for something else. Right? That's not and like yours. That's not right? me, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. Right. That's I have to almost get inside the mind and kind of the soul of another person and think about like, you know, for this person and their art, what, what is the vision? What are we trying to say? Um, and and that's it's it's hard to describe. Yeah. You know, no, how, let's talk about that. I want to like, okay, so just for somebody has no idea I, I always know you have an album 
and you have a producer that helps you make that album. What is a producer? Like, what does that person actually <laughs> bring to the table? Because, like, I mean, didn't the song, that, like, already originate from the musician? Like, right. And I'm being totally like, I know you do also, but what, what is it? Yeah, what is a producer? <laughs> no, I, that's a, a good question. Um, it is different now than I think it used to be. Um, I think uh, nowadays, there's so much technology that people can use. Um, a lot of the clients I work with will uh, get pretty far on their own in terms of like working out an arrangement just on their laptop, right? And mm -hmm. adding all the parts and, and doing stuff that would typically be exclusive to a producer. Um, so in, in my mind, for what I do and the era that I'm doing it in, uh, I would say a producer is ultimately just someone who knows how to get you the sound that you want, who knows how to use the tools, who has you know, uh, done it before, um, and, and can get your track to a point where you're satisfied with them. So like um, someone like Tess Dunn, she comes to you like, here's my six demos. This is what I want to get to this yeah. point, and yeah. you help her to get to that That's point. That's pretty much exactly it, right. And, and it, it has less to do with me, uh, you know, offering like, hey, I have like, you know, a studio that you don't have, or like technology yeah. that you don't have, and more just, you know, hey, I, I see where you're going with this, let me step in and try and add, you know, what I can, and we basically work on it together and see, uh, you know, where it, where it ends up. So, is it hard though to, like, I, I mean, both of you are immensely creative people. For you, how do you, Jake, how, how do you, like, not, like, input your little bit of, like, your touches of creativity onto somebody else's work? Or do you feel like that actually is one of the things the producer gets to do, is to add a little color of that album somewhat? It's, it's a good question. I think um, I definitely have strong ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think depending on the artist, um, it'll be pretty clear how much of that is appropriate, you know? Like, there's some people I work with um, who have really similar taste to me and like a lot of the same music, and, and so... So it's kind of easier to work with them? Well, not or, necessarily okay. easier, but I think there's more uh, that I can do in line with, like, my own taste and my own, okay. you know, what I would hear yeah. going in there, uh, versus... Um, somebody who maybe has really different tastes, grew up listening to different stuff, wants a different sound, and, yeah. and that's, um, in some ways, that's the most fun because it's the most, uh, uh, I'm trying to think what the word would be, uh, educational, I, okay. I guess, in, in the sense that I, I have to really step outside of myself and, and try something different, and I'm branching out, I'm expanding my versatility, all that good stuff. Um, so, so what what is your like a, what what is like your taste of music then like if someone says like so <laughs> let's, let's step back from the producer to actually the creator here of the, your own work when someone says hey what kind of and I, I think this is a terrible question to ask to any musician but it's like hey what kind of music do you play um, <laughs> but you have to you have to answer it sometimes when you're yeah, like this like yeah. this ridiculous guy on the radio is saying like hey what kind of music do you play what I what do you have say answer. yeah it has to be one sentence yeah what's your right? elevator <laughs> sp know, speech well, or whatever. I guess maybe there's two there's two questions in there because it's there's my answer to that as a producer and yeah. then there's my answer to that as like the lead singer of a band that's yeah. music I write but as a producer I think if you would have asked me 10 years ago when I was a teenager like uh, what is your taste in music yeah. I would have said good music <laughs> good I music. like music that sounds good but it's actually something I've I've learned that's really cool about um, Producing and kind of stepping out of yourself in the way I was talking about is that you you discover all these other kinds of music that Didn't catch my ear before yeah. and th there's this process of learning how to listen to it and knowing what it is that people value about it and, and learning to recognize that in All this stuff that I that I would have you know when I was 13 would have said oh, that's just not good Yeah, you know, so no, I, I think that's so true because well, I'm just thinking about recently a lot of the musicians I've um, been working with um, recently that I've been in shows with are in country music mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. I'm not a country fan or I, mean, I lived in Texas for two years and I, I understood then it's like oh I like these stories and stuff and um, my parents they were like 
obsessed with like Willie Nelson when I was like five and I am gonna see Willie Nelson next Saturday at the arena oh, which is really? pretty amazing yeah it's actually a bucket list I've ever had I'm second row <laughs> wow. center yeah awesome. so, <laughs> so cool. I am super excited about that but like on a day-to-day -day basis I'm not really playing country music but when I, you work with people and like and understand the song and everything and like and just like there's good in like all different music it's just you know if it's a good song or not mm -hmm. I always feel like if it's good music okay Karen what's your favorite music if someone asks you, like, hey, Karen, what's your favorite band? Oh, God. Yeah, I'm what do you say? date uh, myself right uh, no, now. But me, I, I'm a 90s girl. Yeah. Called, oh, yeah. I was saying the same thing. You know, 89, 92 is like that little segment's my yes, favorite kind of music of all too. time. Yes, me too. We're probably yeah. the same age. Yeah, exactly. Pearl Jam, Eddie Vedder, okay. I, Close to My Heart. Love. Do you want me to tell you an Eddie Vedder, um, like, story about Santa Cruz? Yeah. yeah. So, first of all, he has a song called Santa Cruz. Yeah, so look it up okay. on YouTube. It's only on YouTube. It's not, he didn't really record it, like, anywhere. But, so there's a friend of mine that um, has been in the music industry, still is in the music industry, um, and he's friends with Eddie Vedder. So if you look on, like, courtside at the Warriors games and you see Eddie Vedder, usually he's right next to him. Okay. And um, he, got, he had Eddie Vedder, you know, he came out to surf oh, quite a few times here in Santa Cruz. So he was, like, right close to you. Yeah. Oh, I saw him oh. at the Civic. He oh, really? He did a, a show at the Civic. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, it was, it was like... Pearl Jam show, not Eddie Vedder, No, right? it was Eddie Vedder. Oh. It was when he did the Into the Wild Okay. Oh, soundtrack. yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was just him at the Civic and his ukulele. And it was the best show I've ever <laughs> seen. Is, it yeah. was the best show I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah. My husband surprised me with tickets that oh, day. That's super we had cool. babies, and it was like the greatest day ever. That is awesome. See, that's way better. I surprised my wife by going to see Nelson. Remember that band, like the long haired oh, twins? Oh, yes. Yeah, because she was obsessed with them when she was 13. <laughs> yeah. And, and when I told her we're going, she was like, Really? I, that was like, you know, when I was 13, she's like, no, you have to go. They're here. We have to do it. She, she, I, I got the picture. It, it was great. That's awesome. Okay, so were you like kind of like a, like other grunge stuff, like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, or was it just... Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally. All yeah. of those bands I really liked. Alice in Chains, I think. Uh, Alice yeah. in Chains, yeah. completely. Yeah. All those. I mean, Pearl Jam was always my, my but, favorite. Yeah. But, and then also, you know, I, I'm, I always have a spot for Beastie Boys. I, I'm a huge Beastie Boys fan. So same guy did the. He was trying to get Beastie Boys to um, to come here, and they said, you know what? If you get us a place to play basketball beforehand, we'll go. So um, high school, uh, um, Harbor High, they um, they like kind of booked the um, booked the basketball court right before their show. No way. Yeah, and so, That's yeah, so cool. they, they were playing. Um, yeah, that was one of. Oh my goodness! I remember I saw them at the Pantages Theater, Pearl Jam. Um, how old was that? I was like 18 years old, I think, and or maybe it's like 16. It was Red Hot Chili Peppers, Pearl Jam, Mary's Danish, a bunch of like it was like a benefit. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was like the harshest concert I've been to. Like that pit area, I lost my shoe. Oh, I had a similar yeah. experience. I was at, I saw them. It was Pearl Jam and Rage Against the Machine. Oh wow! At the Palladium in okay. Hollywood. Oh wow! And I'm five feet tall. I mean, it was terrifying. <laughs> uh, I had to be on my friend's shoulders, but oh my god, <laughs> that so is fun. awesome, cool. Okay, so. I think it's time that we play a song. Okay, um, so your band again is Watch Me Breathe. Um, that's right. Are you gonna play a Watch Me Breathe song, or is your like yeah. from the past, or what? Hey, what no, okay. that's all I'm gonna play. Okay, Just Watch cool. Me Breathe stuff. Okay, so uh, what song is this? Tell us a little bit about um, it. I thought I would start with a song that's gonna be on our new album, um, which comes out in July. Okay. Uh, are you producing it? I am. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big advantage, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, can that's just true. go in there whenever I want. Um, but uh, this was the first single we released off of it, and it's called Don't Fade Away. Never have to conform in a world where everyone 
passion not for love. I wanna talk to the girl in the corner. I never really wanna dance anyway. I'd rather talk to the girl in the corner. I wanna lift her up and say, You are listening to KSQD Santa Cruz. That was Jake Ward from Watch Me Breathe, Fade Away. So that is a new song, Jake? Relatively, right, yeah. New, this, is that going to be on the album? Or it is. It was the album. first single that we released off of it. That was awesome. That was, that really, was really good. Thank you. That is so cool like, when you get a, a treat like that to listen to. I, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if like musicians always like know how like it's so like for us as... I know. I feel yeah. like I'm in the front row. Exactly. <laughs> We're in the front row of the show. We got it right here. Super Thanks, close. I feel like I'm going to like catch a pick at any time. <laughs> yeah. or, or you might. Yeah. If you do, you have to hand it back to me. <laughs> okay, that's true. You only have one. I dropped it. <laughs> um, before I go any further, um, the views and opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily represent those of Natural Bridges Media or KSQD staff, volunteers, or underwriters. They, um, all they represent is me, Karen, and Jake's opinions today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you, Jake, go ahead. As how, what is your process of making a song? Does it like, does it hit you all of a sudden mm -hmm. that like a song come up, or like I'm just gonna like grind through this and come up with a song? Um, they all of the good ones that I end up using do this weird thing where they seem to just arrive. Like I'll pick up a guitar and just be playing, and I'll, I'll before I'm even like consciously aware of it, I'll be yeah. playing something that I really like, and then. Usually, if it's gonna happen, it, it I'll write it in like a half hour. Really, it's just yeah. like it just it's it's flowing. You're just like the yeah. conduit. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, I know that that's like cheesy to say, but when I I've heard people talk about that, the feeling yeah. of like being a conduit, and I yeah. I do I get the feeling that they're describing of it. Yeah. Just it I seems get the same flow. thing with painting. Yeah. yeah, I completely. It's totally a feeling. And, and I have to like, go with get it. In the zones, like get okay, in yeah. The zone. Sometimes, like okay, kids, you do this, whatever. I, got, I, I gotta go here. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah. Where do you, Karen? Where, where do you actually do your art? Do you have like a studio? So you said you have a studio. Is it like attached mm -hmm. to your house? It's or? in my backyard. Okay. It, it's uh, awesome. yeah, yeah. We uh, when I, I this is a second career for me. I used to be a marine biology professor. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> to total yeah complete random switch oh so I mean, many it, of my actually my favorite music um artists in town are actually like attached to marine biology really? somehow yeah i should show you some of their work it's really cool i so, probably know a few of yeah them. and they kind of like you know they meld it those two things together yes so yeah, yes like absolutely. you know like an octopus is one of the most amazing artistic things ever 
Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, took, when I finished teaching, I took my little, my small retirement fund and we built a studio in my backyard. That is so cool. So whenever you're re when you're inspired, when you're ready, you it's not too far away. It's right in my backyard. That's it's awesome. it's dreamy. It really is dreamy. Cool. Okay, I want to play a game and I want to play it. I told Jake that I'm going to play a game. Now, Jake, promise me for one that you are not going to look at my camera, uh, at my okay. computer. I'll cover my view. Yeah, okay, so I am going to play a song. I'm going to play a song for you. Okay. And okay, it's it's actually you playing. So it's you playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I want you to tell me, first of all, I'm going to play like 10 seconds of it. I want you to tell me what song um, it is maybe, and then where you actually played it. Let's well, see. that's terrifying. Yeah, this is gonna be really <laughs> tough. Okay, let's see if I can get the sound working. Let's see. Okay, can you hear it, Jake? I can hear that. Okay, so you hear the crowd. There's a crowd. <laughs> I'm gonna pause it. Does it, okay, so far is it ringing a bell a little bit? Not yet? No, okay, so weirdly enough. More. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It's not one of your songs, I don't think. It's actually, I know it's not one of your songs. Okay, you'll, you'll find out soon. Okay, I'm gonna give you a hint. It was in Santa Cruz. Okay. It was, <laughs> it's on a, a big, huge stage. Oh, okay. I think I'm... Let's see. You'll get it right now. Oh, yeah, okay. I think I know where this was. So That uh, was at the the 150th anniversary show, Yeah, right? of, of Santa yeah, Cruz. Yeah, 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 that was with Test Done. Gotcha. Yeah, got, and so that's actually where I first you know, I, I first saw you, I think. that was. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have the whole video there. Oh, a throwback. So, somewhere, yeah. Um, <laughs> what is your relationship with Test Done? What have you worked with? You know, you've done a lot with her. Um... Well, we went to uh, elementary school together. Oh, so really? We've known each other for a really long time. Um, oh, my goodness. But we got to be friends again a few years ago just because she wanted to record yeah. um, in my studio. So, um, yeah. You just got, you know, Musical but, friends. So that's nice because I feel like you, you know, since you've known each other, like being a producer of her work, has that helped that you actually, like, kind of, you've known her for so long? Um, that, I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. It, there's always like that, I guess it can be awkward, you know, when you have somebody over for the first time and you don't like yeah. know them. So exactly. I, I guess that. Does that actually, as like when someone like, do you have to kind of, I don't know, like really spend some meetings together, like to really like figure out if you're going to be a good producer for them? I mean, this can't be like, okay, produce my album and then we get in the studio. Is it a lot more than that? It's like probably a lot of meetings, a lot of getting to know what the objectives are. Um, I I guess so, yeah. But I have never like had people come over. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll I'll just there's a lot that you can do in terms of digital communication. So. Okay, yeah. So you just yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, that shows my age. <laughs> you have to meet right in person. Yeah, and then yeah. Well, it's kind of a funny thing. Like I've noticed that that there was something I was talking about the other day where it's like, hey, can you leave this on the desk of the person? Like, and it's, I'm realizing all at once like. It's not going to literally leave it on, you know, they're just going to email it to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we have these, like, figures of speech that sort of... Oh, yeah. Exactly. Have so much Yeah. So it's Ex not just you, I guess, Ex is, is what I'm... No, it, no, <laughs> don't it, feel too bad. It's just me. This gray in my beard definitely shows. <laughs> yeah, by far. Um, okay, but I want to talk about this art expo. So, Claude, tell me a little bit about... Um, hold on, let me find this here. Okay, so, so Karen, what what... What is this artist about? I think it's May 18th, right? Right, right. Yeah. And but do you like, so I guess I should give a little preface. So the Art Cave, Idea Fab Labs, Event Santa Cruz are putting on a show on May 18th. It's called Art Expo Santa Cruz. It's across from the old Wrigley building over on the west side. 50 plus artists. And they have this booth, so they're going to be selling their artwork. And, you know, you can, there's going to be good food and beer. And it's just going to be like a really cool place. And when do you get to be in one spot and see 50 artists and galleries. I think that's, I would say almost even for an artist, I mean, of course you want to sell your art, but if nobody came, which we don't want that to happen. Right. Yeah. But if nobody came, isn't that kind of cool to be around all of these like artistic people? Oh, I, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. So I can kind of, you know, 
not only show my work to yeah. the public, but to see everyone else's work. Too. I think that is so cool yeah. just to be a around all of that and get inspired by them. Absolutely. So, so you're going to be selling your artwork, and that's kind of the point of the event is we're trying to, it's not easy to be an artist and to no. make a living being an artist. Right. Um, so we're like, okay, we want to put a, you know, a space where people come and can buy affordable art. Um, and so that makes me think of you, like just besides this event, which you can go to eventsantacruz.com or theartcavesc.com uh, and find out more information. But like you as an artist, how do you sustain yourself? monetarily uh wow uh well, it's not I, easy no <laughs> yeah. it's not easy at all and it's gotten uh it's gotten a lot better i mean the the first year i decided to sell my art which was only about three years ago i i booked a first friday every single month anywhere i could for a year oh, in wow. santa cruz and every so month I did. Yeah. I kind of, it's sort of the only way I know how is to kind of throw myself into it. And I just said, okay, here I am. I'm ready. I'm showing my art. And I showed everywhere I could. Every month I, I put my art up. And that was kind of my start. And then I also uh, started an Instagram uh, account for just my art. Okay. And uh, I did a lot of, being a, a previous scientist, I did a, I did a lot of research on when the best time to promote myself was how to use instagram and and i've been pretty successful actually it's funny that actually getting that, myself out there so you actually do by through instagram you yeah. sold art yes it, oh, that is oh, amazing it is amazing yeah. and and i also have been lucky enough for this online platform called minted okay. um they sell prints of my work and i get a lot of so when i i sell prints i also get a lot of people who find me uh, and say, hey, I'd like to buy an original and actually, or like a commission. And I actually sell a lot that way. And I get a lot of work. And then I still do first Fridays. In fact, this month I'm up at Stripe. Oh, cool. Uh, downtown Suna, Santa everybody. Cruz with Suna. Yeah. yeah. I have my uh, botanical series up there for the nice. month of May. So that makes me think when you're saying that, it's like you can't just do one avenue. I don't think so. Yeah, it's you know you have to have all these different channels to get your work out. There. That's how yeah. I've done it, at least. I mean, I'm, I'm a sample size of one, and again, I'm a, I was a marine biologist for years. Yeah. So this is all kind of it's a new business. It's a you know I didn't even have a, a social media account until I started selling my work, and yeah. now it's. Um, that's the way I impress my son. <laughs> that is how many followers I have. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The way that we have to, yeah. <laughs> I have to tell him how many people came to my event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell, like, sorry, I only have 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's sorry. not going to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what is, like, what do people actually get? Like, say, if they go to the um, Santa Cruz Expo, oh, no, Art Expo Santa Cruz. I'm throwing this. I should eventually know the name of it. Um, you know, what, like, <laughs> Like, do they get actual, are, are there prints of your work? So no, or I'm going to be selling real my... real acrylic, real tactile? My, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to be selling my originals okay. there. So I have canvases okay. that I paint with acrylic paint, and then my husband frames them. Oh, cool. So all of my art is framed. And we use um, pre-stained mahogany trim and kind of built oh, around wow. the canvas. So all of my paintings come framed. And I'll probably, I'm not sure how many I can fit in a 10 by 10 space, but I will be selling the originals there. I only sell the prints online. Okay. Oh, cool. It's amazing what you can get within 10 by 10. Yeah. Yeah. There, there'll be a lot of space. Yeah. Hope it's not windy. That, <laughs> yes. Uh, that is a fear of mine. I have a lot of earthquake tack yeah. that I'm hoping will <laughs> do the trick. Okay. Well, look forward to that again. It's May 18th from 3 to 7 o'clock. Um, tickets at... Santa, no, what is it? The Art Cave SC. Song from our first album this time. Um, and um, I think, uh, I think with a Santa Cruz listener base, we're probably pretty safe. But it's, uh, it's probably the most political song I've ever written. Um, it's about Colin Kaepernick. Okay. Um, I feel like there's been a lot of political songs recently on my show. I think people are in the mood for that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's uh, called We're All to Blame. Okay. I don't have to play. 
pledge allegiance to your big pretty rat. What are all your patriotic words for if it's not how you act? I don't have to close my eyes and support the land and life that we have. Yeah, I know it's everything the flag stands for, but it's always happening. Thank wow. you. KSQD Santa Cruz, you are listening to your new favorite radio station on 90.7. That was Jake, and you are from. What's your band all of a sudden? Watch Me Breathe. Watch Me Breathe. I don't know why. I just got, <laughs> I was thinking of something else, and all of a sudden got subtracted. But thank you very much. Let's listen to a promo break. Yes, thank you so much, Grey Bears. Well, this is the favorite time of the hour. It's the PSA time, public service announcement. De La Viega. It's a special um, a school in my heart since my son went there for a few years. De La Viega Elementary School is holding their annual spring carnival on Friday, May 31st from 4 to 8 p.m. Everybody is invited. There's fun for the whole family, including a bounce house, climbing wall, dunk tank, face painting, an art auction and raffle, and more than 100 prizes. Food will be available to um, including tacos, barbecue, pizza, cotton candy, had me a cotton candy, um, popcorn, and more. De La Viega Elementary School is located at 1145 Morrissey Boulevard in Santa Cruz. For more information, go to eight, uh, call, not go, I would say go usually, they should, we should have their website. Um, call 831-429-3807, that's 831-429-3807. Um, I bet if you looked up like De La Viga Elementary School, somewhere, Spring Carnival online, you would find some information, but look forward to that. It's on May 31 of this year. Don't go next year. Okay, so again, cut. You are going to be where on May 18th, Karen? At the Art Expo. Art Expo. 
And I want to know after the art expo, so you know you'll be there from three to seven o'clock. After that, like, what's next for you? Like, what's like, you've you know you've been hustling for years. You're getting your work out there. What's like? Is there like a next phase, or you feel like you're just going to keep like chugging along and like everything's going great? Like, what what's next for you? Yeah, that's a really good question because I'm always looking to learn more and do more, um, and sell more. So I have. I have, um, well, I, I apply to open studios every year. Oh, cool. So hopefully I will get to do that. I've done it the past two years in a row, and that's been fantastic. Um, I have some projects with Minted in the works um, that have to do with showing my work at West Elm stores around the country. So hopefully that will be next. Um, and I continue. I have tons of seascapes always available downtown at Artisans Gallery. Cool. Um, so, and then I, I kind of am just kind of waiting after that to see what's next. What about you, Jake? Like, what's like, so you have an album coming out in July, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, that's like, I mean, actually, I want to step back a little bit. So, an album takes a long time. Like, how long has this process gone, of uh, been happening that you've been making this album? Um, it's actually hard to answer because there's some songs on it that were written even before... Uh, the first album okay. that I'm kind of thinking fit better here and so I, I have this general problem where I write too many songs okay so I have to have this big list of songs and then think almost like mix and match what I think will work but the the first album came out in February of last year okay so I guess that's probably the best way to to yeah. measure how long it's been so it's like a year and almost almost a year and a half when you like, when you when the album actually comes out, like in a way, those songs are kind of already older for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's like you know, a musician that just came in last week, um, Taylor Ray. She released her single, um, and I've been working with her a lot for the last couple of years. And you know, I remember her doing this song two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was even hard because she had a show, and she was like, "Do I play this song?" Because I was kind of wanting in the mood for some new stuff, but like. The single just came out, and barely anybody even heard the song. And it was hard for us, like, but no, that's kind of your job. You gotta like get yeah. it out there. This is the time to to do that. So, that's kind of tough. It's almost kind of a tragic thing because I feel like it's just the nature, kind of like you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's just how it ends up working. And something that I've uh, sort of tried to do is remember as best I can and as vividly as I can how I felt At that when time. I first heard the song, right when it was new. How did it make me feel? Did I want to listen to it? You know, like that's really um, good. And just, I can't necessarily translate the feeling after I've heard it so many times and like yeah. you know done so much work to organize it over such a long period of time. But I, I try to keep that memory and and just remember that you know hopefully that's what is is impacting people who are hearing it for the first time. Right. Good point. So uh, that's always interesting. Like when you hear bands have been playing for you know, 40 years, like how I do they think keep that it? Too, yeah. yeah. So like, you know, going back to the eighties, nineties, Depeche Mode is my favorite band. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And I see them every single tour. I see them like three times on the still. Yeah. Oh, you still. Do still? Yeah. Really? My, my son's first concert was that, even though he's not excited about that. He's Depeche <laughs> Mode. We could go to 21 pilots right after he was more excited about that one by <laughs> far. But, um, but yeah. And it's like, you know, it's not totally the same as like you know when they when enjoy the silence came out in 1990 and like the emotion that they felt compared to doing it now it's like it's not the same as i much. won't go to some of the i can still <laughs> go to eddie okay but, yeah you know i definitely have my 80s pop bands that i loved yeah. as a you know young teenager and i've seen a couple of them i won't say you know and it's i'm like oh it's kind of sad yeah. sometimes yeah and also when you see them like age a little bit like wait what, I know. what happened there yeah <laughs> i know even though it, that that makes me kind of sad because you know no one's looking at me god look yeah. at how look how she aged you know when they're looking at my art i mean everyone ages right that's I mean, true they have yourself, to yeah. age yeah. Yeah. yeah well you know and it's not the age that i think I, I, it's just a, like it's how do they sing the same song yeah for 40 years? yeah how do they do that like yeah. the age of the song it's yeah. just like it's like you know it's it doesn't mean maybe as much to them as like i mean like you mentioned sometimes you have to trans yourself back to okay when I was 18 years old this is what right, I felt right, when, right, I, right. when yeah. I did that um, but at the same time then you have you know like me and Karen they're listening to your music and it's like 
no, that sounded great to us and we're totally enjoying it. But you might be thinking about like, what's for dinner? Or something. I mean, I don't know if I'm that. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Maybe after forty years. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's what I'm thinking now. But that's how I think feel sometimes when you go to like these people. Like, yeah, it's been forty years or so. So. Um, <laughs> no, I think it's a real problem that, that people have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're kind of calling it in. Some, I mean, most don't. And, and the, all the, I mean, I feel like I, I'm not. I'm giving Depeche Mode a hard time. I think their shows are great. And I'll go to them when they're eighty years old. And Rolling Stones. <laughs> I was. I remember. Yeah, that's you know, it's so funny. I was just telling somebody about Rolling Stones. I was like. Man, it's amazing how like, he performs Mick Jagger like ten times better than anybody in like in their twenties sometimes. And I was, t I was like, yeah, last time I saw them, and like, oh my goodness, last time I saw them was nineteen eighty nine actually. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I don't really know as much, but but at that time I thought they were like oh, that's an old group or something. But they were pretty amazing. Yeah, actually, see so who opened up for them? It was um, it was Living Co the Living Co Living Color. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and Guns N' Roses. Oh, yeah, wow. and the, yeah, they opened it, and I remember like Guns N' Roses were pretty entertaining until like the end, or like maybe like three quarters of the way. Um, I think um, Axl Rose was just upset about something, so he left the stage. <laughs> and, and then like Slash was like, um, okay, I guess I'll play like a solo for a while. So he went up on stage, yeah, and he was telling a story, and he used so many like f bombs that I didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> like this is not even a sentence anymore. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I think I was like 13 or something. Yeah, but um, oh my gosh. yeah, but it was. You know, I don't know. And the whole f bombs time. were during the solo. Or yeah, he, he yeah, no, he was like, did a solo, then talked. Yeah, and it was like this was back. in the 80s. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were not sober. Yeah, no, they weren't at all. No, this was this was like total like you know appetite for destruction. Oh yeah. Phase. Yeah. So um, I don't think they've ever been. I mean, like, what's it? What's the like the new version when they have like this guy? No, he's the new version. Like he has like a um, a KFC hat on I remember that guy like their guitar player like he oh it's called Buckethead oh yeah oh yeah. my god yeah, you know, was, I, I'm yeah. having like a big memory yeah that, that was like a middle phase and then there's like the cornrows Axl Rose yes yeah. I remember that yeah and that's I think yeah, that's, that's now still is that maybe or I don't know I don't know cornrows yeah oh, did I say cornrows yeah no that's yeah, okay. yeah. it's a it yeah. could be a pun I know but <laughs> yeah it's, it's not whatever. good it's like he was I'm not I'm gonna say cool but you know he was Axl Rose back then and, and now he has cornrows yeah but the other people are cool like Slash he's like in other groups and stuff Slash that's who it is yeah yeah yes. um okay well I want to get one more song out there at least um we have okay. about 10 minutes so um can you play one more song for us yeah, um, let me just switch this up real quick. Um, I think if I got one more, I'll do another song off our first album, um, which is, by the way, I haven't mentioned this, but it's called The Lighter Side of Darkness, okay. and it's on basically anywhere that you would look for music nowadays. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Yeah, we'll end um, off the show to make sure you, like everybody knows where you where to find all of your work. I want to find Karen's Instagram, all this kind of stuff, so yeah. Not cool. let the crowd get us. Good. Um, so this song is called All of You. <laughs> I know that's what we say There's a man
listening to KSQD Santa Cruz 90.7. What I read here, your ink spot on the dial. So thank you very much for listening to our little show here. We have Jake Ward from Watch Me Breathe and Karen Owen of House of Boys. Jake, you have a band. Are they local? Yeah, yeah. Based in Santa Cruz. They're based in Santa Cruz. Go. Who, who's yeah. in the band? Um, I, so the way I do it, I do what I refer to as the Tame Impala model, okay. which is that I, in the studio, I'll write and play all the parts. Yeah. And then, um, live, I'll have my friend, uh, Ryan Green. Okay. Oh yeah, Ryan. Uh, yeah, you probably, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you knew him. Um, played in Urban He played two weeks ago on the show. Oh no. Yeah, I said he got <laughs> sick and I'm doing quotation marks here. No, <laughs> well, no he really, he really was sick. Yeah. Twice, uh, yeah. twice now then he'll be this figment of our imagination. Exactly. Like, right. coming up. Like, Mention on the show, he's never here. He's yeah. this mythical figure yeah. you know, that everybody knows. No, and then uh, and then I'll have my brother play drums. Oh, cool. Um, I actually didn't say, but Ryan plays the bass. So okay. He does bass and then, and then Carl would do the drums. Awesome. Cool. If you ever want to see Ryan, he's at um, Tap Poor Room. You know, That's every, right. Every night, Monday to Tuesday. No, um, <laughs> not playing music, but serving beer. But he serves music at other times. Um, okay, so if somebody wants to find Karen Owens music where do we go where do we go for House of Boys where where was and music I mean art sorry yeah, I was like oh yeah no if music here <laughs> could, actually no can we switch the roles can you give her her the guitar and she can sing a couple songs yeah sure uh, do you, do you, it be painful. you know I tried the other day at the next day it's like an award show in Santa Cruz and um I the bands were playing and I said you know what my dream is like to be on stage and I like, play music somehow but I can't play like I have no rhythm at all and they gave me the tambourine <laughs> yeah and the tambourine is actually pretty tough too it's not it is. it's not as easy you, you can't like, hide yeah, right no, you no yeah. credit it's like you know it's you got to keep with the beat and I can barely even clap to the beat but yeah <laughs> Um, so Karen, if you want, yes. uh, somebody wants to find out, like your Instagram, what, what's your Instagram? My Instagram is just at House of Boys Design. Okay. I mean, I kind of stuttered. At House of Boys Design. Okay. And boys is normal how you spell it. B O Y S. Yes. yes. Okay. Design. And your, if they want to like buy your actually artwork and they're not on Instagram, they haven't figured out how to download the app or whatever, yeah. where else do they go? You can go to my Etsy shop, which okay. is just houseofboysart.com. Or locally in Santa Cruz at Artisans Gallery, and this month at Stripe. Awesome. So, like right now on Stripe, at Stripe, if they come to Stripe, got your work is on the walls. Yes. Okay. And, yes. And they can say, "I want that one." Yes. yes. And then they have to wait till the end of May, though, to get it. Okay. Because <laughs> that's first Friday. <laughs> okay. They have to wait scope, but they can but scope yes, it out and they get can ready for reserve it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how about you, Jake? Where do we find out about your work? Well, um, there are a couple places. I would say if you want the full picture, you can just go to watchmebreathe.com. Okay. Um, and that's kind of like a hub to anything else you want to see. There's links to Instagram and yeah, all that Yeah, Instagram stuff. Yeah. and Spotify and YouTube and all that stuff. And then uh, if if you want to just find the music, it's it's anywhere that you would look for it. It's on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon. Um, so if you want to follow us on Spotify too, that would be super super rad really cause, so i i want to I mean, we have a little bit of time here i want to ask you like when you're directing people to your music you mm -hmm. want to get the word out about your music you want people to listen to music but you also want to make a living if you're telling people go to spotify mm -hmm. you're making point 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 zero cents every time they stream it That's like right. is that like why i'm curious why you tell people let's hey, go to spotify well uh first reason is i own uh all the rights to my music because okay. I'm not signed to any label and I write it all and produce it myself. So um, if you if you add it up, even though point zero zero seven yeah cents for every stream sounds really small, it adds up. That you know that's one stream, yeah. right? You know, that anytime anybody plays the song for any reason, uh, for something like fifteen seconds or something. So actually, if I'm the sole recipient of the revenue of that yeah. it's actually not bad and it's it's technically like semi passive income too because people could listen to it while i'm sleeping right so yeah um and there's there's also uh just the fact that you have to do that if you want people to actually listen to you at all right i, I don't think I, I know that there are people that try to do um you know try to avoid streaming sites or do it kind of the old-fashioned way but 
I can't remember any of their names. And I don't think <laughs> anybody else can either. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's always like these holdout musicians, and finally, like, okay, we finally, I think it's like Metallica or somebody, like, okay, now we're putting our stuff on streaming. Same way that there's there was, you know, a holdout, uh, holdout painters who didn't want to give up doing portraits to digital photographers, and holdout uh, uh, priests in the Catholic Church that didn't want to give up handwritten uh, scribe work because yeah, they the could, nobody, could read, right? nobody could read the Bible besides them. There's yeah. a, generally a, just a fear of innovation with people. Fear yeah. of change, I think. I love that you have that attitude about like, hey, and you actually do make some. Actually, uh, you know, you can make up, like I said, passive income. Off it of, also, off of you know, you could think of it as, also as uh, just promotional material too. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm certainly not losing money on the streams, and and with that, you can get people to come to events and get people to buy things that actually do cost, you know, hard cash that ends up in your hand, like shirts and. Uh, stuff like that. So. Yeah. Well, cool. No, I'm, I'm glad, quite glad that you know, you're actually happy. You know, it's it makes me think of. Okay, this is ridiculous. No, so um, Taylor Swift has a new album, <laughs> that that, um, that or a new song that came out. And the first time I hear it, I was like, oh, that sounds so empty. And like, you know, just like a, a pop song that has like no like real like I'm not gonna really care for it. But it's like, you know what? I, I think I come here twice and then like I'm gonna be hooked. That's always what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, after the second time, it's like, oh my goodness, this is a really good song. So sometimes when you first hear a song, it takes a little bit of like listening it a couple sure. times. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So that um, happens to me. Yeah, go ahead. And so, um, okay, now everybody knows I listen to Taylor Swift, but I have two, you know, I have a whole family of kids. That yeah, I'm sure yeah, you're yeah. not yeah. the only one. So. Yes. <laughs> but that pa Panic at the Disco guy, the lead singer, he makes that song. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. No, oh, he's, um, he's awesome. That, that really he's was like fan. the best part of it. And anyway, well, thank you so much for Karen Owen from House of Boys and Jake Ward from um, Watch Me Breathe. I, I wish we had like a minute more because I, I want to hear the story about why your name is uh, Watch Me Breathe. Uh, I gotta hear it, but you know what? I think you're just, when you find him on tour somewhere, on Instagram, you know, reach out to him and uh, or on Twitter or whatever you guys want to do and um, and ask him the story. So Just look up John Cleese on Bill Maher. You'll find it. Okay, You'll find you got it. <laughs> okay, thank you guys very much. And Thanks. we will see you next week Thanks, on the man. Event Santa Cruz radio show.